Hello, everybody, and welcome to a very, very special webinar, Discover How to Unlock a Seamless School Opening. Yes, that is a possibility. Um, and so we have a special panel discussion. We also have a special presentation about technology that can help you literally unlock a seamless school opening. I think it's something that every transportation director and really anybody in school transportation dreams of and has nightmares about the opposite of that. So before I we, we get into the nuts and bolts here, I wanna bring on Antonio Civitella, TransFinders President and CEO, and Zach Morin, the uh, TransFinders Sales Enablement Manager, and they're gonna just kind of give you a big picture of what we're gonna be covering, and then I'll be right back, and we'll talk more, we'll get into the panel discussion. We also have a poll coming up, so have your clicker ready, because we wanna get your thoughts on things as well. Tony, take it away. Hey, good morning, everybody. Uh, super excited. Yeah, school opening is really what we get judged on, right? And we know it. We know here at TransFinder, really, uh, at the end of June, July, and August, we all have the same countdown on when the school will open because then our summer is finally over. Yeah, we celebrate when it's over because it's all about that. But all that hard work, how do we now apply it to school opening? There'll be a lot of great takeaways. We got some great uh, discussions. So let's get going. Real quick before we dive into it, Tony, you know, to get some context, we're hearing a lot of the same challenges that, that school districts are, are facing. And, you know, one one key thing to, to know is just that you're not alone in some of those challenges, right? Recently read that 78% of districts are constrained by their driver shortages. Districts are, are really being asked to do more with less. And so we wanted to talk about how does our technology play a role in there? How does our technology play a role in starting the school and, and making you successful and, and kind of continuing that success throughout keeping you informed? I think it's going to be really great hearing from some of our, our panelists that have lived it and been through it. They'll be able to talk about those key features, but some really high level pieces. You know, how do you deal with staff shortages, right? Not having enough drivers out there on the road, dealing with sub drivers, having to go out and, and drive routes they're not familiar with dealing with not having the information you kind of need at your fingertips. Uh, we hear a lot of the time that, that districts are bogged down with phone calls, trying to answer questions from district uh, staff, from, from parents, and then parent expectations, right? I think we were talking before this call, AJ and I about, you know, a parent can easily go on their phone and track their pizza. And when they order a Domino's pizza, they want that same level of expectation for their, their children's safety, right? Rick, from there, I think, uh, you know, we'd all love to hear kind of from some of our panelists first, and then Tony and I will, will come back in after to talk a little bit more about the technology and, and where that plays a role. That sounds great. Thanks so much, Zach. Thanks so much, Tony. Um, before I bring on our first uh, panelist, I'm oh. going to ask Bridget uh, if she will launch a poll. We have a quick poll question for you. Basically, what we want to know is this. Uh, how was your opening this year? Was it great? No major oh. issues, then you probably aren't on this. You're probably not attending this webinar. Um, okay, yeah. it was an okay opening, but we had some technology issues. Or okay, but we had some staffing issues. Fair. It was a fair opening, but we can make some improvements. And then it was terrible, and you had staffing and or tech issues, and we can dive into that a little bit. So take a couple seconds to uh, answer that question, and then we'll come back with the results a little bit later in the webinar. I'm gonna give it about 10 seconds left, but I can tell you that the people that we have on um, can relate to probably all of those answers in the past, but the ones we have on today will go into that number one slot. Great, no major issues. And that's why they're on with us today. They're gonna to share what worked for them and why we wanna always highlight these folks is because they are in your seat. and we know that um, they, you will relate to them because they're just like you. We talked about this yesterday, you know, that when we hear from uh, people who have been in our same spot, you know, they just have much more credibility. So anyway, we'll come back to Bridget. We can bring on um, our first panelist I'd like to bring on is Cheryl Caldwell. Cheryl Caldwell is a transportation director at Boyd County Schools, and she's smiling. Good so, morning. Made it to good morning. Um, Cheryl Caldwell is director of Boyd County Schools in Kentucky. So Cheryl, open-ended question for starters. How was your school opening? 
It was great. I, I was so pleased. Uh, we've been working on this project for a little over two years now. And uh, I, I've got to tell you, I've, I've been a little stressed all the way along. Uh, I think I told you yesterday, a neighboring school system went live with a parent app with different company a year ago and uh, had a lot of problems. It was on social media for weeks and I've lived with that for a year trying to avoid that. And as far as I know, we did not have one, you know, social media bad post. All the response has been positive from parents, from school administrators, school secretaries, uh, central office staff. Um, one of the things I shared with you yesterday, on the first day of school opening, we got a uh, email from a parent who is also a uh, secretary here at Wake County Schools. And she said, well, I had a major mom fail last night. It's 11 o'clock at night. And I realized I had lunches packed and clothes laid out and everything, but I hadn't checked my kid's bus schedule. But she said, I got on the app and there was the information I needed. And she said, now I'm typing this, sitting at my desk, watching the little bus come around on the map. I just called my boys and said, the bus is almost there, get out to the bus stop. And she said, it worked great. I can't believe how well this is working. That's and awesome. that was the very first day. My um, feeling is Cheryl, if there were negative posts on social media, you probably would have heard, you wouldn't have probably had to look for it. I, 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 yeah, I'm sure I would have been made aware. <laughs> the central administration, you said they were, they know that first day of school is tough and tell us what they were saying and then kind of like what wound up actually happening. Okay, well, I got a uh, text that day from the uh, superintendent who was at one of our elementary schools and said, I'm hearing nothing but good things about this app. Uh, one of the things we were able to do with Viewfinder was print PM dismissal reports. So all the kids that already had a bus schedule, schools knew what bus to put them on. Uh, typically, years past, our first day of school is all day long, calls from parents, calls from schools. What bus does this kid go on? Um, central office. Uh, I talked to the receptionist the, the next day, second day of school, and she said it was so funny here yesterday. Uh, the assistant, the superintendent came out about 9, 10 o'clock in the morning and said, well, it's about time for things to break loose here, isn't it? And I had asked her what she meant because I don't work at central office. And she said, generally, first day of school is nothing but complaints. I can't get through to transportation. The school can't tell me what bus my kids goes on. She said, we waited all day and it never happened. She said, it, it, it just worked. But um, we've worked really hard these two years building routes, making sure our data was right. Uh, I think one of the big things for us was not just Stop Finder, but Stop Finder with GEO alerts and opening up that communications feature, which when I first heard about it, I thought, I don't know if I want parents to be able, if I have the staff to keep up with all those messages. But what I have found is that saves so much time. Uh, I'm not spending 10, 15 minutes on a phone call. I can answer uh, five or six stop finder feedback messages and get them the help they need when it's convenient for me, not when they call. So that's been really helpful. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm very pleased. You talked a lot. I thought a couple of things you, you, um, you discussed is um, like even with stop finder, you held off a year because you really wanted to geo. It's explain to us why you were very methodical. You yes. had inherited a system and it wasn't really implemented. And then you went with Stop Finder and you did this very uh, methodically and you made a decision um, to kind of hold back a year. Okay, when we started building routes two years ago, uh, we built our, the first year we did our special needs routes and our uh, Head Start routes, preschool routes. Uh, we used that year to work with our drivers to start building the regular routes. Uh, and we could have implemented Stop Finder just to let them know the schedule, let parents know the schedule a year ago. But my fear was if my drivers weren't driving according to that schedule, and, and I knew I couldn't make them, and I understand that. They, they have a start time, and it, it doesn't always go to the schedule. Uh, so I chose not to do that because, uh, well, my Amy said yesterday, uh, 
we got to share good data, not bad data. So we took that year to make sure our data was as correct as we could get it. And But then when you implement geo alerts and the bus notifications, even if you're not running exactly according to schedule, parents can still keep up with the bus and know when to get the kids to the bus stop. Uh, we've had very few complaints this year. You know, typically the bus was zoomed right by, didn't, didn't even stop. Uh, we really haven't had those kind of calls this year. It's complaints have been not totally eliminated because we can't eliminate every problem, uh, but greatly reduced and much easier to, to figure out and get people help with. You also highlighted how everybody got on the right bus, <laughs> that there are like, you know, not some of these, especially you said high schoolers can be the worst offenders of getting on the wrong bus. Or, so how did you navigate? How did you make that happen? P PM dismissal, first day of school especially, but that first week, you know, we were able to print PM dismissal reports, send them to the school secretary, so they gave them to teachers. Uh, we have four elementary schools in the district. We had two elementary schools that did not have one child on a wrong bus the first day of school. Everybody got on the right bus. One school had one kid um, and one, one school had three. That school had a brand new principal and in a brand new temporary location while that school's under construction. Uh, that was pretty good. Our high school did not, which is notorious for kids getting on buses, did not have one kid get on the wrong bus. And I mean, typically first day of school is hectic. We're probably, because we run two routes. We take preschool and elementary home and then go get middle and high school. Typically we're 30, 40 minutes late getting to middle school, high school. Sometimes some buses later because we've been trying to figure out how to get all the elementary kids home that, that first day. If they get on the wrong bus, we still try to get, get them home or if we have to take them back to school. But buses ran pretty well on schedule from day one here this year. That's awesome. Now, the other thing I wanted to highlight is um, it's a lot of effort to get people to sign up for Stop Finder in terms of you were, it's it's not, um, you were very in, innovative in the, your approach in getting signups for Stop Finder. And I just maybe share some of the tips that work best for you. And you're, I think you said you had 52% um, within a month um, signed up already. So tell us how you did that. Yeah, we, I checked this morning, we are at 52.4% um, active users right now. Uh, so th the way we did it, um, August 16th, uh, there was an event here, we call it Ready Fest, and it's where parents can come and get school supplies, and and it, it's a big event. Well, um, we had a, a table at Ready Fest this year. We had laptops playing the uh, Stop Finder video showing parents how to use it. Uh, we had drivers there uh, handing out flyers and talking to people about it. And, and we sent out invitations, initial invitations that day. So people didn't have to stop and think about it and wait for it. Uh, I think by the end of that day, I just checked, we already had 56 people sign up uh, out of the 780 invitations we sent. Uh, and then parents began spreading it word of mouth. Uh, and we started getting phone calls. Uh, we did send out a uh, a letter to all the parents in the county telling them about it, how to get the app. Uh, we put links to Stop Finder on our transportation webpage, you know, telling pe people how to use it. Um, I think I checked by the time, uh, the day after school started, we were up to 47.49% uh, you know, buy-in from parents, up to 52%. Now, I think a great part of that was a parent to parent communication. Uh, we started getting requests so fast, we couldn't keep up. We had to scramble around here and we put a, a quick Google form to sign up uh, on the uh, district webpage. Uh, and we pretty quickly had up to over like 500 requests and we were working long hours and weekends, adding kids and adding kids. Uh, sure, before you go any further, Tony, I want to let you know, we told Cheryl all about Forum Finder, so you can get to that in your presentation. Just, I know Tony, <laughs> Tony already perked up 
So <laughs> it's funny that we did a dress for him, find everyone Cheryl. Go ahead, Cheryl. Sorry. You know, well, well I'll, you know, I'll talk about that. And also, <laughs> I love the idea that you turned on feedback, and I'll give you some. I'll give you my feedback on how you turn on feedback because you're love it. We'll talk more about it. That's yeah, awesome. I, I'm really happy with, with the feedback. The first few days, I mean, I stayed here some late days because I tried every day to answer all the feedback. But now we're getting three or four messages a day, and a lot of them are just, hey, this is working well, or my kid won't be writing tomorrow, you know. That's awesome. Yeah. That's exactly I, what it I, 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 I got to chime in. There's no way I could hold my, I can't do it. <laughs> Carol, you know, you know what it was, the, the biggest feedback that we received about feedback when we first released that is we don't need parents telling us which way to drive and, and all that stuff. We don't need them. We don't need a suggestion box. So listen, we all know things have changed uh, in a social media world. It's changed. It's not even reality. It's it's the perception. So our argument was, don't you rather hear from parents on, on in a private area instead of going on Facebook or something else? I mean, I'd rather have a chance to fix something if I'm doing something wrong than if I don't give you an option, parents are going to go to Facebook, and then I can't fix that. And so initially, it was horrible. Oh, you got to... By the way, it's what I tell you. We didn't have a way to turn it off. So right away, like if you don't if you don't have a way to turn it off, I don't even want their software. It's like, why would you know? So we had a immediately we had a scramble, turned it off because uh, but I think Cheryl, you have it right. Give people an opportunity to really explain to them what's the, what's going on. And because if you do, most people don't complain. You know, no, and you know, right think about it. Tell them. Um, explain why the issue is and let them know you're working on it, that you hear yeah. them. That's all they want. But the other That's thing is if they make a phone call, they're angry and they, they're not really listening to you, but when they type it out and then I can answer them a few hours later, they've had a chance to calm down and they listen. Yeah. I There's didn't want the feedback text. at first. I was a little afraid of it, but it's been great. I'm so glad we decided to roll Carol, with it. You, that was our theory is that once, and by the way, you could also have your auto responder uh, appear right away saying, hey, thank you for your feedback. We'll get back to you between three and six months from now, right? You could set, you could set your time frame when you're going to reply back. So love it. Uh, shout out to everybody, obviously, on our team that, that gave you, you know, showed you how to use the tools. And uh, wow, over 50% usage is very good, too. Yeah. Good. Sorry, I had to chime in. I had to, no, I had to I, chime in on that one. I knew you would. <laughs> um, Cheryl, one last thing. You shared a cool story. Um, not actually, it was not a cool story. It was a hot story about a bus situation. Somebody they thought it was a fire, turned out to be a fire, but how you were able to use Stop Finder there. And this is actually a great um, scenario that I think will resonate with a lot of our attendees here. Yeah. This was the first day of school, elementary route. We get a driver radio in and said, I'm evacuating the bus. I've got a fire. And I'm like, panic. So, you know, we call 911. I send, I had two mechanics here. I said, you guys go out there, head out there. I got on Stop Finder and was able to send the parents a message. And we had a pretty good buy-in already on this route. Uh, the bus has been delayed. Uh, you know, stand by, monitor your, your app. Uh, let them know when it was back running again that uh, it, they were in a spare bus. Turned out it was not a fire. Uh, the brakes had been replaced and it locked up, had a, a new driver and he just smelled it. He thought it was smoke. Uh, you know, he, 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 no big emergency, but the, we were able to contact parents. We didn't have parents calling here. Where's the bus? The bus is late. What are you people doing out there? Uh, they knew. That's yeah. awesome. That's yeah. awesome. Cheryl, I know we could go a lot longer because you had a lot of great stories. So what I am going to say to attendees is um, if you have questions or you want to follow up, um, send, <clears throat> feel free to email your questions to mystory at transfinder.com. We'll follow up with Cheryl and get those answers back to you. Um, Cheryl, thanks so much. Cheryl's going to be staying on. So Tony may bring, bring her back on camera or Zach. But Cheryl, thanks so much. 
for joining us. You can blacken your screen now, and then we'll bring you back on um, later. You, Cheryl. All Thank right. You. Uh, no, go ahead, Tony. So, by the way, I'm getting questions, of course, and we want to encourage people to go in the question section and, and uh, uh, go ahead and uh, put in your question. And someone did want to know that, uh, that if they heard correctly that Boyd County is using Google Forms. I hear you. I think I don't know if that was just a for information purposes or what are you doing Google Forms? You should use Form Finder. So I'm not sure. Uh, so I'm going to just answer your question. I yes, they are currently using Google Forms. I think sometimes you know when it's when you're in a bind, you want to get things done as fast as possible. But the value of Form Finder is that you have all that data right in your system. You don't have to export anything out out of Google Forms. So if you want more information on that. Please let us know. Yeah. I will say if we had had we had so many requests so fast, and that's just the fastest way I right. could get it done. So we reacted. I would have a form in place with more information than we requested would have made my life a lot easier. That worked in a pinch, but yes, the, we that's looked, right. we're not, we're not going into, I agree with you 100 percent because sometimes you just got to get it done, get her done, right? But right. I think you're also we we'll learn from a lot of your experiences that we are getting forms ready and prepared for our clients for Absolutely. future. So this is how we're all learning together. So again, shout out to everybody. All right. Next up, we have AJ Neitenbach with uh, Transportation Director in Revere Local Schools in Ohio. AJ, come on board. Uh, just great to see you. And uh, just for us, I'll open in a question again. Tell me a little bit about your opening how did it go um it went it went pretty well actually it was it was good um you know it, it went a lot better than i thought it would be it was my it was my first uh opening as actual supervisor so it it turned into you know it was it was not as bad as i thought it would be um yeah. you know it, it it seemed like we had our ducks in a row pretty well and then at the end of it you just turn it over to your drivers and they just take care of it Oh, they, they know what they're doing so you just let them go you know i gave them gave them the routes and you know they they kind of knew what the routes were anyway you know with changes they looked at them they looked at the route sheets they told me what was wrong and we fixed it and uh it, it went really well it was nice you mentioned not uh when you were in the leadership position but you've had lots of openings in the past not as smooth as this year yeah yeah um it, I, and, you know, and this was just, you know, different places that I've worked like last year was was rough, you know, and that was a different school system, the whole nine yards. I was an assistant um, and, you know, you talk about the phone ringing, you, you almost get PTSD with that phone ringing constantly for days on end. I mean, but I, I'm finally, you know, I, I remember literally asking my secretary to stop the phone from ringing you know it was it was rough you know so you know, yeah. you know there's that you know you're the first you know it's your first uh you know school opening as a supervisor you know and i i can only imagine the pressure that you're under you know somebody's been in the district for a few years you know they have a history and you know, but you're trying to make, you know, the best impression possible, of course, as well. So um, tell me what it was that you did that made it so successful. What did the things that your teams do in advance of the opening? Because it doesn't just happen. Um, they always talk about the duck on the pond, right? That looks like it's really serene on top of, boy, is it paddling like crazy underneath the surface. Tell me what you did. Uh, you, you know, the amount of information that has to get processed is is just overwhelming sometimes. You know, I mean, for with every with every kid, you know, there's there's a different schedule for that kid. You know, and and it's it's just a, it's really crazy. So I mean, I guess the the one thing we did, you know, and and we're just coming in as a as a new um, administrative team, my assistant and I is is we just we just worked real hard to try to get all our ducks in a row as best we could you know and get the information out and and really it was the it was really it was the routes for us um we ended up 
our the the system that was being used before Transfinder um, Plus, we were using Transfinder Pro. So I came in, I came into this job uh, right around the beginning of June. By by June eighth, I talked to the salesman Angela, um, and she was telling me, "Hey, you got to change over. You know, we're we're getting rid of we're getting rid of Pro. You got to go to you got to go to or actually, yeah, we got to get rid of Pro. We got to go to Pro Plus." And I didn't know either one. You know, and I'm going, well, if I got to learn something, I guess I'll learn this new one. So, it, but I, I I told her, I said, hey, I got to have these routes out, you know, published to the, you know, to, you know, all the parents and stuff by, you know, first week of August, you know, school starts August 19th. So she said, hey, you know what, we can do this. And I said, well, okay, well, you know, I thought about it for a while and, and it just made sense. So, you know, I took my Transfinder University class the next week. She had me in a class on, I think I talked to her on a Thursday. She had me in the class on a Wednesday the next week. By the time the class was over, I'm going, hey, I'm going to need my maps now, you know. And it was, and sure enough, within the next week, it was like maybe four days, I had my maps. And here I go, I'm in it, you know. And, you know, poking around and learning the routes and all of that, it was real intuitive. To, to be able to work that system that you guys have. It was real intuitive for me. It was easy. It was it was easy enough for me to um, explain it to my assistant and she's tech savvy anyway, you know, she's just a wizard on this stuff and she knew the routes already. So the, the way it, it all opened up, I mean, we had the routes ready to go and to give to our staff right, right when we needed it. You know, we had everything posted just right when it needed to be. And and really, it was. I, I'm not going to say it wasn't a lot of hard work. So we spent a lot of hours on it. But you know, if if you just follow, you know, everything that you think you need, and just keep on it, and just get as much out there to your staff as you can get, and then and then let them take it. You know, let them do what they do, and and it, it worked out really well. You know, we, we we did have most of the issues that we had was stuff that I I didn't really know I needed to worry about at that time. You know? getting into private schools and, and how that information gets processed. And that's stuff to work out for next year. But for the most part, I mean, you know, the way we started out, it, it was good. And everybody else was telling me, wow, this is really smooth, you know. And I'm going, well, you know, <laughs> it wasn't really much that I did, you know. But it was, it really, it really worked out well. That's great. AJ, I'm going to read a quote that you gave us. Um, you just sent it to the team and it got shared around. And that's part of the reason why I wanted to have you on because I'm like, Wow, this is great. And I just want to thank you, though, for joining us today. Here's what AJ said. Um, at a time when I needed someone to deliver, everyone at TransFinder did just that in a big way. So I just thought, wow, that's uh, we all know that when you're in that time of need and people just kind of making things happen and clearing the schedules and just saying this is, you know, getting bumped up to a priority, which I think we do that all the time. But anyway, AJ, I want to thank you so much. Again, AJ and Cheryl are going to be staying on. AJ, you can black your screen now. Thank you so much. I appreciate it. Um, before I bring Tony and Zach back on, I'm going to ask uh, Bridget if you would share with us the results of the poll we asked earlier. Go ahead. You want to give us the results? Sure, absolutely. <clears throat> so uh, results from how was your school opening this year? There was 7% who said, great, no major issues. 16% said, okay, but there were some technology issues. 40%, uh, the largest uh, group here said, okay, but they had staffing issues. And 28% were fair. Uh, they could make some improvements. And 9% said it was terrible, staffing and or tech issues. That's great. Well, not great, but I mean, and thank you for sharing those results. And even like the staffing issues, um, I can tell you that what I know Tony and Zach are going to go into how we can help assist um, in, you know, mitigating some of the challenges that come from being short staffed. But without further ado, I'm going to bring back Tony Civitella and Zach Moore, and they're going to get into the nuts and bolts of what we can do to help you discover that seamless opening. I'm going to black myself out. I'll see you guys at the very end. Thank you, Rick, and thank you, Cheryl and AJ. Good, good stories. Obviously, you know, there's a mixed crowd. We have some clients in the crowd. Uh, we have some messages, you know, some questions here. So keep coming through. 
uh, Zach and I will do our best. Probably more me now at this point, Zach, because you're going to be doing a lot of the presentation. But keep coming. Some some people are here, our prospects saying, hey, um, I'm open to learn some things. Yeah, you're definitely here going to learn some stuff. So uh, put your seatbelt on. You're going to learn a bunch of things. We're going to go as fast as possible. Again, we're going to learn, teach you certain things specifically on our products. But really, some of these things, you could really apply it to uh, you know, even if you have other products. We'd love for you to switch over to our products. I mean, we're not going to lie about that. But I think there's some good best practices that Zach and I will will touch that. I'm pretty sure you could apply to daily operations on no matter what you're using. So take it from here, Zach. Yeah, <clears throat> no, it's a good call out, right? We're gonna have a mixed crowd. So definitely as you're seeing this, think about, you know, does the solution I have in place support me to do these kind of pieces? Is this a, a piece where bringing technology can, can really help me? I think that's the biggest piece that we want to talk about is where does the technology play a role in making you successful in school open or really throughout the year? A couple of things I wanted to highlight that I'm going to go through with our platform. It's really some of the efficiency tools that our, our platform brings you, right? How can you automate a lot of the work that you're doing right now? And this is such a big piece we hear when we're working with compact districts that we mentioned it earlier, but they're being asked to do just as much as a, a large district is. They still have to manage drivers buses, routes, parents, but they just have less tools and resources to do it, right? Is there a way to bring technology in to make you able to do more with all the, the tasks put on you? Uh, also, how, how can you optimize and make sure that the operation you're running is a, as efficient as possible, right? We also want to bring you some insights. We heard really great pieces when we were talking with Cheryl, talking with AJ, you know, Cheryl was able to pull up at a glance, hey, I could see that 52% of my, my parents have signed up for a parent app. That's because we bring you tools like dashboards to be able to see how many parent apps, uh, invitations have been sent, what percent has signed up, how frequently are they signing in to use it. Bringing all that information to you at your fingertips is going to help you be more successful rather than having to go dig through or, or just have that lack of information. And then finally, well, big piece well, that we Zach, I mean, I got to add to that. Yes. I mean, you know, we we know that some, some out, people out there are saying, Got to get a, you know, we ask, why do you want to get a parent app? What's the purpose? What's driving that? Well, the board wants me to get it. And so, you know, sometimes you know it, it's just a checkbox. Yep, I now have a parent app. And I don't know how many of our clients just check the box, but you know, we want to make sure that if you're going to get this, let's get it to be as, as successful as possible. And you know, I love 51%, but I love 71% even better because I want as full in, um, parents' engagement as possible. And again, why would you want to get them engaged? Because now you have their attention. And like Cheryl mentioned, she's initially, the, the feedback was a little, a, little bit over, a little bit overwhelming, but now it's in the groove. You get a couple a day, it's manageable. And that's really what we want to talk about because it's not just a checkbox. You know, obviously we have routing system. We have, we have so many products now. And um, we don't just check the box anymore. And we've really never believed in that. But we we have great, we're very grateful how our clients are using our products, not just say, hey, I have it. I Yeah, I have a, I have a tablet inside um, the vehicle. And you know how many you know, prospects we've talked to? Yeah, we have a tablet, but the driver uses it as a coat hanger. We don't want you to make that kind of investment with us. And that's what it's going to be used at. And so we're, we're going to make you sweat, right? We're going to make you work of the products that you, you're buying from us because that makes a big difference. So I know some of you are clients, you know, uh, we, we, are, we don't let up. We give you homework. We want you to be successful. And, and people out there saying, what's going to make it different? I already have something. Why would you be any different in it than Brad and X, Y, and Z? Well, the difference is we're going to make sure you buy our software, you're using it. And that's that's a big difference. So I wanted to add that, Zach. It's really key. I think, you know, talking with Cheryl yesterday, she'll even tell you, you know, a big part of what made rolling out a parent app as successful as it was, was working with their trainer, getting the feedback. You know, our, our training teams rolled out parent apps to a lot of districts across the country. So we're able to really help give you the insight. What is going to make this successful? How do we promote this? How do we market it? How do we kind of build that adoption on? Last piece is just that communication piece, and that's so crucial, right? Being able to communicate out information, 
We hear this struggle all the time from districts. They're getting inundated with phone calls because nobody can find the accurate information. It's not real time. It's not across the board. All of their stakeholders can't get their hands on it. We want to talk a little bit about some of the tools we bring in to help you communicate out that information to your stakeholders. So. Big piece before we get into it is really just talk about the landscape of how technology has changed, right? I think about going back to 2003 and, and what we were offering in our, our routing platform versus what a user coming into our environment today. And I really want districts to think about how are you using technology today? What pieces are you leveraging and where are the kind of opportunities? So we've been hearing you know, Cheryl talking about rolling out her parent app. Not only was it key that she had something she could communicate, but she mentioned the geo alerts piece was really critical for her. She wanted that tied to GPS. Maybe not every district wants a, a parent sitting there and watching the app and seeing where the bus is live. But the reason that's become so powerful for us is that parents want to get the alert. They don't want to be able to, you know, uh, miss the bus or, or get an alert saying, hey, the bus is on its way and look out the window, it's, it's driving down the road. With our parent app now, parents can log in, they can see where the bus is, or they can simply get an alert saying, hey, the bus is 10 minutes away. That gets them going, gets the kid out to the bus stop on time, and keeps your operation running more efficiently. So key to see how technology has changed and what you're doing to kind of keep up with some of those innovations out there. One piece that I always want to stress is, is the automation that we bring. So RouteFinder Plus is, really doing a lot of the work for you. And I wanna paint a couple of pictures here, but there's so much work that people are doing, whether they're manual, whether they're in other platforms that could be automated, that could be made faster. And right now they're having to go in and and you know interact with every student, every request, every bus <laughs> uh, that comes in, they've gotta go in and do a lot of manual work. But imagine a scenario where your system is integrated with your student information system. A new kid comes into the district, you're automatically first thing in the morning getting all of that information brought to you. Not only that, but also you've had a, a platform that was able to go ahead and automate a lot of the work. We can assign her to the right school. We can put her in an eligibility zone. If she only lives a quarter mile from the school, maybe she doesn't qualify for busing. The system can do all that for you. And then it can take it even further to say, based on where the student lives, we can assign her to the safest stop location so you don't even have to do anything beyond that. You come in, your student's been brought in, they've been routed, they're ready to go, you're ready to share that information out with that parent. And Zach, one of the way to be efficient also is that, you know, you probably have a walk to school policy, but you know, you've been pretty relaxed about it, you know, things are okay. But now that you have such a massive driver shortage, well, what if you start really just looking at your policy and, and use that policy to see, well, if we go right at the policy, right to the right to the tenth of a mile, what what does that mean for students? How many students now need to walk? And then walk, pardon the pun, walk it back, right? This is how many kids must ride the bus. Well, then let's walk it back. And this is where the automation really helps. Maybe you have parking passes for for your high school students. Well, then let's get the park parking from permits enter into our system. Now you know, well, the odds are that a kid's gonna have a you know, high school student's gonna drive to the school. And by the way, no high school student is ever gonna drive to school by themselves. They're gonna get a buddy coming with them. So these are the things that you're trying to automate things. Data is important, but now you start making some decisions based on, all right, well, maybe I can get by with the number of drivers I have. It's possible. So Keep that in mind. It's all about data. Well, I've worked with so many of our districts that are using our platform to say, what if we increased our, our non-eligible zone by a quarter mile? How would that change things? And they're able to run those kind of what if scenarios. They've got their live data that they're, they're leaving untouched, but they're running multiple scenarios to say, what if we tweak this? What if we tweak that? How many less buses would I have to run to do it? Again, and, having and a platform exactly, that lets I mean, you run those. And Zach, that's really, for for the audience that are not necessarily using our software thinking, well, how do I do that? Well, look at that aspect, right? May, if you do know that there's a certain kids in certain neighborhoods, could you eliminate those? If you know they're part of inside your policy, well then could you do that starting even next couple of weeks? Could you do it faster with our software? Of course you can, but could you do, is that a low hanging fruit? Is that a, is that a takeaway from this meeting? even though you don't even have our software, 
just think about that. Absolutely. Look, talking about automation is key, but a really powerful uh, part of that is, is also the optimization we have built in. So RouteFinder Plus is, is working with uh, Esri to, to use their routing algorithm to be able to offer tons of optimization tools. So we can optimize a single run, but we can also take an entire tier. All of your, your buses go into the elementary school. How efficiently are they really running? And we've seen our clients really utilizing this. Uh, whether it's our absorption tool, which allows you to cut a single run because maybe you have a driver shortage, or they're using the ability to optimize trips. I know one of our clients had, during COVID, they lost seven drivers on a Friday. They were able to run our optimization tools by Tuesday. They had all new routes, they had cut those seven, and they were able to get the information out to parents. So running our optimization tools makes our, our clients much more efficient, much faster, and it makes the overall operations efficient, saving you money, time, yeah. vehicles. And Zach, let's face it, you could be very efficient, but then somehow, you know, it's always the lowest denominator, right? That sl slows you down. What is the weakest link? Well, let's just say parents are pretty relaxed out there. You give them a time frame to, to get their, their kid on, on uh, to pick up the bus, but they're pretty relaxed, right? They're running a little late. Uh, all of a sudden, you have a tight schedule. You made everything very efficient. And now, all of a sudden, parents could actually mess you up because you know they're not following your guidelines. You no, know, you you're not laying on the horn early in the morning because maybe you're like, "Come on, kid, get get out of here. We got to get you on the bus." So that could slow you down. And the other part is again super efficient. But now the drivers are flipping through a piece of paper to figure out how to get from one stop to another. You see, these are things, yeah, you got a great, maybe you have a great routing system, super efficient, but how you're making sure that your efficiency is followed across the board, because there's so many places where it becomes back to the old way, even though you have very efficient routes. And by the way, you could have extremely efficient routes and things are not being run efficiently on the, on the roads and with parents, it could actually be worse than you started with. And I think you guys know this. Look, Tony, one thing I think that it's important for us to acknowledge as we're talking about the optimization, as we're talking about bringing this technology in, I think the reality is there's some some hesitancy within the market of this too. And, and you know, sure. fairly so, right? Any software solution that comes and tells you, look, you don't need routers. Bring in software, click a button, it's going to do the work for you. Those are people that have never actually transported students before, right? Uh, the reality is our software is built around how do we empower your experts and that's what all of our clients are they bring their expertise to the to the process they know their local area they know their kids they know their policies and so they need a system that can take all of that information in take in information about what streets can a bus get down what is your policy about how many students can ride on a, on a high school bus versus an elementary school bus and they also have to have tools that make it easy for them to put that information into place uh, i think AJ brought it up earlier. He was talking about what he was really surprised by getting into our platform was the ease of UCFAM using it. It's always a really difficult balance. How do you give people a tool that's powerful enough to deal with the challenges they face, but easy enough that anyone can jump into it? People coming from no software background can start using it and, and having it help them. Uh, that's that's a real powerful tool there. And Zach, today, you know, we're, we're trying to make it easier for so we, re we require a router to use our software, of course, but those individuals today are also driving the bus. And so who's actually routing? And this is where uh, when they get back to the office, they have a stack of things to work on and routing becomes less and less of priority. And that's what we're seeing this across the board. So how do we automate things that we know that the routers are also on the road? They're, they're totally occupied for for driving a bus so we got to make sure that software we're building has to be so easy that even the experts are going to go oh cool i just saved myself some time that's important i agree insights are really key and and again i love the examples we heard from cheryl and aj but you know insights are a big piece that our, our clients have been looking for out of the platform and i think about uh, dashboards that we offer now for uh, school open right, to make you successful in school open. I need to, at a glance, be able to see, look, how many kids do I have that still need to be mapped? How many kids don't have a bus assignment yet? How many how many routes don't have a driver or a vehicle assigned? And so we offer full dashboards now 
that lets somebody at a glance be able to see all that information and know what is my to-do list? What do I need to do to make sure that I'm gonna have a successful rollout here this year? But and we wanna make sure that these type of insights are not just available in front of your computer because that's the only place you could see it. You gotta be able to see this information everywhere, whether it's on your phone, your tablet, at home. Uh, we can't just assume that, oh, you can have a great, you know, uh, stress-free, uh, no interruption time in your office. Well, those days are over. I don't think anyone ever experienced that, but if you did, most likely those days are over because now you gotta get this data any place you're at, and including uh, there's other stakeholders who want this, right? Maybe the principals, the, the uh, which by the way, speaking about efficiencies, uh, your principals have to be part of your game plan because if you get to school, and you have multiple tiers, and I know many of you do, while well, leaving school to pick up other kids because this is the afternoon, that's what could all fall apart. Make sure that your principals are part of your plan to say, come on, let's get these kids on a bus because we got to get other, uh, we got to pick up other kids. You know, once we drop these off, we got to go to another school because of multiple tiers. And so they have to be, they got to be part of your plan. They got to buy into what you're trying to do. And, uh, I'm hoping you know, maybe some of you guys could give some feedback. Are you doing this? Are you trying it? If you can, go ahead and put some questions on there. I'd love to hear your feedback. I think that's a, a really good call out. I mean, I hear it all the time when I talk to uh, somebody looking at our software and I can talk about all the, the dispatch views you have and they tell me, well, look, we don't have any dispatchers. We're all out driving buses right now. Sometimes even more powerful than a live view that I could sit there and watch is send it into my inbox schedule an email so that I have all this information in my inbox waiting for me when I do get that chance to breathe and, and I want to take a look. But, you know, give a big picture. What people are using our platform to be able to keep track of is things like my student ridership, right? So I know there's some questions about does this require, you know, a student ID card? We do work with student ID cards. We can also manually track student ridership. We can share this information live. I hear it all the time where uh, school admin are, are taking phone calls saying, hey, did my kid get on the bus in the afternoon? Parents expect to be able to know that information, right? And so with our platform in real time, I can see who's gotten on and off the bus. How many riders do we have on the bus currently if I have a breakdown? What students are getting on and off at the wrong stop? But I can also see all kinds of information about my vehicles. Uh, are my vehicles running late, early, on time? Are they making unplanned stops? What vehicles are getting consistently to school late? That's a, a real key thing that I need to either look at my drivers or I need to look at my, my route plan and see what changes do we need to make there. So lots of information available. It's all about how do we make it readable? How do we bring it to your attention? And then how are you kind of utilizing that technology? A few uh, pieces I like to call out there as far as what kind of information we're bringing. GPS tracking is a really big one, again, that question comes up a lot. Uh, parents calling in saying, hey, bus was supposed to be here five minutes ago, didn't come. Uh, the ability to be able to on the fly say, oh, let me take a look. Oh, it looks like bus 200 is about five minutes behind. Just give it a little bit of time and it should be there pretty soon. That student ridership, that student tracking. I know this is a big piece that parents want, but also big reasons for a district to be able to keep track of it. I hear all the time, hey, I've got 60 kids on the bus. I asked the bus driver, he tells me, yep, I'm full every day. But once you start getting that student tracking, you can see it looks like actually on average, I've got about 10 kids arriving. Maybe there's some opportunities here to be a little bit more efficient with our operations. And then just big picture, what kind of key metrics do you wanna track? Is it ridership? Is it mileage? Is it time on the road? What are you looking for? Age of your vehicles? We can bring all that information and, and make it really accessible to you. Our system is, is very customizable. So again, however our clients are trying to see that info, that's what we want to kind of build around their needs. Tony, I see those questions in, coming in hot. I assume you're on top of them. I am all over them. By the way, a couple of good things. I heard, um, obviously, like, you know, somebody's tired of the Sick and, sick and tired of the question um, is so-and-so on the bus, right? Those are such a, that's a tough one, right? To know who's actually on the bus, who got on the bus. Uh, those are things that it's accountability. Uh, as a parent, 
uh, you know, we do want to know where our precious kids are, you know, precious cargo, where they're located. And of course, the new generation wants to know everything. And by the way, maybe my my grandkids will, maybe they'll get it. You know, maybe my son, first he's got to get married and have kids. So he doesn't, you know, he's still in, he's still in school. But maybe his kids will get the option to put a chip in their ankle. And then we know exactly what they are. We know exactly. So, but we're not there yet. So yeah, I am definitely answering tons of questions here. <laughs> That's awesome. Last piece I had for us is, is wrap it up with communication, right? So I've talked about your ability to use the technology to be more efficient, to automate a lot of your work, to oversee that things are running correctly. Well, that's great if you're, you're living within transportation, you know everything's going good, but how are you getting this information out to your other stakeholders, the people that are, are blowing up your phone all the time? Parents are, are such a key one. Having a parent tool that's really a one-stop shop, this is what they expect, right? Some place where they can log in, they can see all their students in one place, what bus are they supposed to be on, what time is it supposed to be here? And then really key is those timely notifications. I want to get an alert if there's going to be you know, a, an issue with the bus running late. I want to get that ETA notification saying, hey, your bus is 10, 15 minutes out. It's time, you know, I better grab breakfast, grab the backpack, go out the door. A simplified way to be able to kind of keep track of where the bus is. We've talked a little bit about being able to track that vehicle. I know that's uh, that's what Cheryl's doing at, uh, at her district, but not everybody wants to stare at the app. A lot of the time, just like for you, you want the important information to be brought up and, and bubbled up to you. Parents want the same thing. Send me an alert for what I need to pay attention to, right? And by the way, you can still get alerts because some questions I popped up, like, do I have, I mean, what if I don't want to share uh, for security purposes? I don't necessarily want to share the location of, of the bus at any given moment. And I get that concern. I get it. You could turn that off. They can still get the alerts, right? But, you know, and I've heard that before. It's getting less and less of an issue, by the way, because it's very hard to, to camouflage a school bus on a road, right? So I think that's something that uh, some of you are concerned. And I think some of your security officers are like saying, hey, we, we cannot have a bus be visible anywhere on, on, a, uh, on a map for the district. Remember, it's only for parents that have that bus going to their school. They can't see any given bus, so we're not allowing that to happen. But if, if I have bus 12, by the way, bus 12 could be on a shop, so now bus 23 is gonna be picking up my student. It's just really, I'm just seeing the bus is assigned to pick up my student or or my son or daughter or dropping them off. I can't see the other one. So I just want to, maybe uh, there's a little misunderstanding about that. Okay. Good clarification. Well, just you could turn it off. You could turn it off, right? You could turn That's it off. Right. It looks great. And obviously when we show off this functionality, it looks great because, you know, you could track it on a, on a, on a map, but you don't have to. You just turn that off. Once you start sharing out with parents, it's just as important that your school admin have the same information, the same access. You don't want them taking phone calls from parents saying, oh, well, I, I don't know if your kid's riding. I, I don't know where your bus is. If a parent can pull that information up in their app. So district access is, is huge too. Uh, it should be mobile friendly, right? So with our, our viewfinder tools, your school admin can pull up any information they need from a, a phone, from a tablet. We hear all the time, yeah, first week of school, teachers are out there at the, the buses getting kids on, on the bus. And they're pulling up on a, a tablet or a phone to say, let's take a look. Let's see what bus you should be on when they're getting students boarded there. Last piece is, is really for drivers, right? Driver shortage is such an issue. We know that there's some hesitancy with drivers to bring in technology, but this is also a big driver of what's helping maintain my, my driving staff. A lot of drivers want to be part of a district that's investing in their drivers and things like turn-by-turn -turn navigation. So if they're asked to drive a route they've never driven before, being able to pick up a tablet, see where they're supposed to go, get the most up-to-date information, it's been a really big game changer for drivers and, and trying to build uh, build back that driving staff. Another big piece so, that we're seeing- Zach, this is a big deal, right? We know this because we obviously, I don't wanna make an assumption that, that uh, everyone out there, even though you're not using our software, you're not, 
not being efficient with your routes. They're, you know, they're, they're sloppy. We're definitely not saying that. You could have very efficient routes, even on paper. You know, some of you are very good at that. The thing is, how do you transfer that information to the driver? And that's really, that's really the key. Once you have a system, a routing system that now uh, they would use a tablet like this or any device that, that you want to use. Now at this point, you can follow your most efficient way. So keep that in mind. We're not saying, hey, your routers out there, especially the ones that are doing this manually, you know, you could be more efficient. Maybe, but there's no way you could follow a, a, a piece of paper as a driver. And you know, some of you, a lot of your drivers are using their phone. They put in addresses and they're using Google Maps to do this. We've talked to so many clients saying, yeah, our drivers use their phone and they plug in their information in Google Maps. And that's, you know, that's that's tough, of course. But I just want to add that in there. One piece that we've seen a lot of feedback from drivers that have been really positive is especially the, the student ridership, right? On a tablet, being able to pull up and see what students are getting on here, sharing student photos can really help with one of the biggest issues drivers are facing, facing, which is student behavior, student conduct, right? How many times has a, a student acted up on the bus, they ask for their name, and they'll refuse to give it. And they, they're kind of at a, a standstill at that point. From here with the tablet, if you could pull it up, see, yep, this is my student, I see his picture right here, uh, I can go ahead and, and report this or, or create a form to, uh, to submit on this, they could do it right there from the tablet without needing to, to have a lot of back and forth. Tony, I think that brings us kind of right up to the uh, the end. Last thing that we wanted to leave on a, a message here is just really that working with a partner like uh, like TransFinder that's able to bring all of these tools. Now, we don't think that everybody needs to go from zero to 100. We do work with districts to roll this out. Even Cheryl said it took her a long time to get StopFinder out to her district because she knew how important it was to have her routes in the system, to make sure that information was correct before we started rolling out the other technology pieces. That's how we want to work with all of our clients to, to be successful. But it is important that you have a partner that's able to bring all of these pieces for you. Hey, Zach, I, there is a there's a common theme on the questions here as I'm answering. One of the theme is GPS. That really it seems like there's, uh, you know, the compact size school district we always talked to in the past. Again, what's compact size? It's under like maybe 5,000, maybe 3,000 students. And then maybe you're transporting a couple thousand. In the past, this group just really didn't want GPS. Ah, oh, we know we know where to go. What's happening is clearly for parent notifications and all that does require GPS. But things have changed so much. You might already have technology in a bus that provides GPS data. Of course, as you as your technology needs are growing, especially as you want tablets for parents and I'm sorry for drivers and other information. Well, then you just keep adding on. But really, basic. Uh, we have some basic uh, technology that we offer, that we also offer directly to you, or you could have other companies that you buy from. But really, a whole idea here, and this this all-in-one uh, screen here that Zach has open is that we provide everything. We really are one solution company at this point, even with the hardware. So we could provide you everything. But if you already have it, Good, you save yourself some money. Well, you don't have to buy twice. We will work with almost any technology you already have on your bus. Again, any because there's going to be some some one-offs out there. So just reach out to us, or when we reach out to you, just ask those questions. Hey, I have this this thing already in, on my bus. Will that drive the parent app? Right. I think that's right, Tony. I think we're we're right here, maybe just past time. Uh, Rick, I'll, I'll let you wrap up with any last thoughts that you have. Thanks so much. Great presentation, guys, and lots of questions. Tony, I don't know how you multitask and answering both, but you're kind of amazing there. Um, Cheryl and AJ, are you on? I just, if you want to give me one quick takeaway, I'll pop you on real quick. I know we are running over, but I just felt like if you had a takeaway, I want to give you the floor for a second. Okay. Um, yeah. <clears throat> Sure. AJ, go ahead. Give me a takeaway. Um, hey, there's a lot of you guys got a lot of great stuff, and and we're just getting started over here. But uh, you know, I'll, I'm open to all those things that you guys just talked about. It's really good. Uh, that's an awesome takeaway, Cheryl. 
one of the things I thought about while we, you were talking, um, we weren't really able to cut any routes, but what we have been able to do is make our routes much more efficient. Uh, get deadhead miles out, yeah. but mostly we redesigned several routes to get kids door sided that we weren't able to do before, which makes wow. it much safer. The, you increase service. You actually increase service. That's what that is. And you yes. increase service with the same resources. And safety. Yes. Safety. And, and, yeah. I, I'm so pleased with the product. I, I couldn't wow. be in the place. Thank you so much, Cheryl. Thank you I for reminding it. us that it's not I, always about saving buses and so forth. You could become more efficient and provide safer mode of transportation. That's Absolutely. always a, a bonus, of course. Absolutely. Cheryl, again, thank you. I want to thank all the attendees. Um, great questions. And I just want to encourage anybody who either had a great opening and wants to share their story. We love to share these. We love to hear how uh, you were able to do that. Um, just email my story. It's M-Y-S-T-O-R-Y at transfinder.com. If you didn't have a great opening and you want to learn more about how we can help you with that seamless school opening again email my story at transfinder.com and or you can email get plus at transfinder.com and until then i just want to again thank everybody thanks for just a, a very educational and informative uh webinar and we'll see you at our next webinar have a great rest of the thanks day everyone. everyone take care everybody